Surrender now, a German voice shouted. He was outside. His jeep's engine was loud, but he was louder. Come out or we will open fire. Lily did not look out of the broken window. She was inside an old building. It was surrounded by Nazi soldiers. If she did not surrender, they would shoot. They would keep shooting until the building fell down. Okay, she yelled. She was hiding in the corner of a dark room. Her brown bag was next to her. Inside the bag was a secret and her job was to keep it safe. I'm coming out. I will come out from the front door. She waited and listened. Put your hands up. Put them in the air or we will shoot you. The soldier said, If you are holding anything, we will shoot you. They really want to shoot me. Lily thought, checking her gun, I want to shoot a few of them too. They killed my partner. There was no time to think about the past. Lily did not have time for emotions now. She was a professional. She had a job to do. Surrendering was not a part of her plan. She tied her red hair in a ponytail, crawling on her hands and knees. She moved across the room. She moved down the hallway. She went towards the back door. Come out, you have five seconds. If I come out, you will kill me, she thought. Suddenly, she turned left away from the back door. There was a wooden door in front of her. It went to a basement. She opened it and ran down the stairs. Know about this basement, but they don't know it goes to a tunnel. About her, she heard the sound of powerful gunfire, machine guns shooting the building. They would tear the building apart. Lily knew the soldiers were told not to kill her, but they were trying to kill her. They knew she was dangerous. Someone told them who I am. I had a secret identity, but that is gone now. Now every Nazi in Germany wants me dead except the ones in charge. The bosses want me alive. They want to ask me questions. The basement smelled bad. It was not very bright. It only had one old light bulb. In front of her was an old carpet. The carpet hung from the ceiling. Lily pulled it down. Behind the carpet was a large hole, the tunnel. She was going to escape through the tunnel. But what was on the other side, she did not know. Perhaps someone was waiting for her. The gunfire stopped. The sound of the jeep engine also stopped. The leader of the soldiers was shouting. He was speaking German. Lily knew German and she understood what he was saying. Go inside. Don't come out until you find her. Look in the basement too. I have to go. Lily decided. She took out the light bulb. The basement and the tunnel were completely black. She didn't care. Lily was an American greatest female spy. She had finished 38 missions. She always succeeded in her missions and she was not afraid of the dark. Three hours later, Lily sat in a cafe in Berlin. She was smoking a cigarette. She watched a thin waiter walk by her. He was ignoring her. Why was he ignoring her? She had red hair and her face looked like a foreigner's face. Maybe he did not like foreigners. Excuse me, she said in German. Do you see me? On most days, Lily did not bring attention to herself. She was a professional spy. Lily did not walk around in fancy clothes. She did not drive fast cars. She was very healthy, but she did not look like a model. Sometimes people ask her name. She never said Lily. The government had given her a dozen fake names. There was no reason to use her real name. Normally, she acted shy, but she wanted service. She was thirsty and needed a drink. Excuse me. She repeated. Yes, can I help you? The waiter asked. There was not many customers. The cafe was not busy. Bring me a coffee and an apple pastry. He turned and went behind the counter. 
he poured the coffee and put the pastry on a plate then she watched him walk to the kitchen why is he going to the kitchen everything i want is there at the counter she knew why he had left he went to use the telephone he was going to call the soldiers he was going to say the lady with red hair is here then he stopped her thoughts and being silly she said to herself then she saw him he was looking at her from the kitchen window his nose looks broken the thin waiter brought her coffee and a pastry he put them on the table she noticed he was sweating the weather was cold why was he sweating was he nervous he wiped the sweat with his shirt sleeve anything else no she said drinking her coffee the coffee was cold are you a tourist your german is very good he said he tried to smile but his smile did not look real she shook her head and she looked at this broken nose i live here i have lived here many years he was looking at her back something is not right she thought first ignored me now he is paying too much attention to me please let me know if you need anything else miss bolan nali bolan the waiter left i'm getting paranoid she thought she lit a cigarette smoking was a bad habit but her job was dangerous there were many things to worry about smoking was bad but some things were worse like other spies and nazi soldiers and people who helped the nazis lily was almost done eating her pastry she heard a familiar sound the sound of a jeep engine the soldiers were here she stood up first the waiter was in front of lily took her brown bag and her fork she pushed the table away she ran towards the waiter she was holding the fork in front of her the thin waiter jumped out of her way lily ran through the kitchen she escaped from the back door of the cafe she ran into the night but she knew the soldier would follow why did you come here the small old man asked he was not happy he did not like late night visitors and he did not like nazis are you being followed lily held up her brown bag i need a place to hide are the nazis following you he asked again no she lied he pointed to the bag what is in the bag let me in and i will tell you no the small man closed the door lily knocked again quietly she did not want neighbors to hear go away the man said he was behind the door go take your secrets away lily looked behind her the soldiers were out there they were looking for her she needed to hide fast she had to get off the street david david if you do not let me in they will catch me she said she pushed her face against the door if they catch me they will ask questions they will ask who helped me i'm not helping you but i will tell them you did she did not like to scare people but her mission was important she could not let the nazis catch her she could not let them get her bag the door opened the small man was holding a gun i could kill you he said get inside now i need to use your restroom she said too bad david pointed the gun at her head give me the bag i came here to hide i did not come here to give away my secrets if i shoot you i will take the bag he said you will not shoot you will help me i need to go to the american embassy sit down lily sat down at the small wood table he sat by her he smelled very bad perhaps he did not have water in his home he was still holding the gun outside they heard her no many jeeps they are coming she said you have to trust me why should i you will tell them i helped you she took out her cigarettes she offered one to him he reached for it lily grabbed his gun she was fast she grabbed his wrist with her other hand he threw the gun on the table i'll take this she said picking up his gun she looked at it it was very old does this gun work no he said she opened her bag and dropped his gun inside david did not move he sat and watched her i could run outside he said i could say you broke into my home 
you could try lily said she took out her gun but you would fail my gun works fine if sh if you shoot the soldiers would hear enough she yelled she hit the table with her hand you will help me now where is your telephone i do not have a phone lily stood up she did not believe him she looked around the small one bedroom home you were lying am i do you see a phone she went into the bedroom there was a phone by the bed yes i see one get up i'll tell you the number to call a few minutes later lily hung up the phone my friends are coming someone will be here soon i will leave you alone are you crazy david asked his eyes were big he was scared why did you give them my address the soldiers will see the foreigners coming to my house you put my life in danger david this is a war we are all in danger but i'm not a fighter he said i'm an old she brushed her red hair off her face she was tired david do you remember when we met he nodded you helped my niece a soldier was bothering her i was almost arrested but i helped her lily said she put her gun away i brought her here remember i brought her to your home she was safe yes the police came here too they followed you to my home what did they do she walked to the living room and david followed her they asked questions they asked me about you what did you say i said i did not know you that was the truth he said and what did they say he paused there was tears in his eyes he was very scared and said they said you were a spy they wanted me to call them if you return lily looked at him closely he saw she had beautiful green eyes will you call them she asked she looked sad to help an american spy or help the nazis he said i don't want to help any of you please leave me alone lily heard a motorcycle outside that must be my ride she thought good i'm ready to leave she opened the door and looked out the motorcycle driver waved to her my ride is here she said lily put her gun inside the bag she kept his broken gun too she took out some money and threw it on the floor i'm like you david i do not want to live in a world of spies and nazis if we beat the nazis perhaps we will not need spies lily ran outside she got on the motorcycle they drove away quickly she looked over her shoulder she knew she had not said the truth the world would always have a spy you failed your mission the agent said he did not tell lily his name they were sitting in a small office the office was inside an empty warehouse the agent with no name was wearing a large blue coat and a white shirt he fixed his red necktie he was sick and he coughed a lot perhaps we should give you to the germans i did my job i got what i was told to get lily argued i got the folder she pointed at the folder the folder had been in her bag now it was on the desk in front of her she was going to speak again but the agent raised his hand he stopped her from talking yes he said frowning you got it good job so why are you angry because he said inside the folder was information very important information was the information there half of it was only half lily's face turned pale what you were saying half is missing that's right where is the other half she shrugged her shoulders i don't know i robbed the office you told me to i took the folder did you open this folder of course not she said that is not my job but you know what is inside of it lily shook off her shoes they were uncomfortable and her feet hurt she took out a cigarette the agent with no name took the cigarette away i asked you a question miss lever say are you an idiot yes i know what is inside the folder she took out another cigarette and lit it i was told to find that folder there it is and inside inside is a list of names americans who were working for the nazis 
Then my job is done, Lily said. Our man told us the list was bigger. He said there were 300 names. The agent in the blue coat opened the folder. He took out some papers. I counted. There are only 149 names. He is lying, she thought. There were 150 names on the list. What do you want? She asked. I was chased by Narcisse. I was almost shot for that list. The agent coughed. He walked backward. He walked backward. He did not like the smoke. You have a dangerous job. You have been successful in the past. But I will report this failure. I must tell your boss. He can decide what to do. My boss is a woman. Lily thought. He is lying again. She looked around the office. Where is my boss? He will come here later. You must wait here. You said, my mission is not finished. Half of the list is missing, she said. I will go out again. No, you cannot leave. They know who you are, he said. Opening a window, he put his head outside for a moment. Are you looking for something? She asked. He closed the window. I wanted some fresh air. He waited for her to finish smoking. They know who you are, he repeated. So you cannot go back out. I have a question for you, she said. The list of names, those are Americans, government workers. The agent with no name sneezed. He took out a tissue. He wiped his nose. Yes, those people are working for Narcisse. Correct. He put the paper back in the folder. We will find the people on the list. She leaned forward on the desk. She touched the folder, but he took it away. Yes, we will find them all. What will happen to them? You know what will happen? He said, they will be investigated. If they are really spying for the Germans, we will learn. We know what to do with people who turn against America. Kill them, Lily asked slowly. She moved her back. She moved it closer to her. Yes, if they are Americans working for the Nazis, they must die. I agree, she decided. Lily had not told the agent everything. She had opened the folder. She knew where the other information was because she had it. She had the other half of the list. But Lily was always paranoid. She never trusted anyone. That is why she had not told him yet. When the agent looked away, Lily took a gun out of her bag. He turned to her. She pointed the gun at his stomach. What do you think you are doing? He asked. Do you know how to count? She asked him. Can you count to 150? He closed his eyes. You are making a big mistake, he said. You saw your own name on the list, didn't you? Miss Lipsy, put that gun down. I work for your boss. What is his name? Lily asked. It does not matter, he said. You don't know his real name anyway. My boss is a woman, she said, smiling. And you, you don't know my real name either. The agent opened his eyes. Lily thought he looked afraid, but she was not sure. Here, she said. She put the gun on the desk. I trust you. You can have my gun. He looked at her face. Then at the gun. Quickly, he reached out. He picked up the gun from the table. Outside, they could hear jeeps coming. Where did you get this old gun? He asked, laughing. Then he pointed it at her. I thought you would use a better gun. Well, it does not matter. You were right. Yes, my name was on the list, but you will never tell anyone. He pulled the trigger, but the gun did not fire. She took out her own gun. You were right too, she said. I do use a better gun. Lily shot the agent three times. He fell down on the ground. She took the folder and put it back into her bag. Then she ran outside. The motorcycle driver was there. He was watching the jeeps. Look, the Nazis are coming. He yelled. Did you finish your business? Yes, she said. My mission is over now. Let's get out of here.